Welcome to the class. Dear students, this is the part 2 of the video titled Structural Elucidation of Benzene. Here we are going to prove that the real structure of benzene is the resonance hybrid structure. This is the actual structure of benzene and not this. The ketule structure is a false structure. This is what we are going to see in this uh, video. In part 1 of this video, we have discussed how Kekule came to, uh, to conclude that these two are the structures of benzene. So I would like to make a short rewind. During the times of Kekule, there was no um, newer technology like X-ray diffraction method. There was nothing like that. He relied only on experiments and he relied uh, on these chemical reactions to elucidate a structure of benzene. So initially he found out only this structure. Now what does this structure indicate? This structure indicate that benzene is a ring of 6 carbon atoms. It's a cyclohexagonal ring of 6 carbon atoms. Also one hydrogen atom is attached to each of the carbon atoms in benzene. And there are 3 double bonds and they are at alternate positions. So this is what Kekul gave. This was the only structure that Kekul initially proposed. Then as you know, a lot of objections were raised to this structure. A lot of objections were raised to this structure because this structure was not able to explain a number of chemical reactions that actually benzene could show. So as a defense to these objections, Kekul postulated that this bond, you know, each of the double bond here, this bond actually oscillated back and forth. Okay, That means this bond would go here, this would go here and this would go here and then come back. So that uh, would in, uh, lead to a second kind of structure, right? This one will be here, this one will be here, and this one will be here. So that would lead to a second type of structure. So when so Kekul actually stated that in if you take a solution of benzene, both these structures would actually coexist in the solution. Both these structures would coexist in the solution. So this structure, structure one and structure two, both are the structures of benzene. And uh, Kekul was successful in giving an explanation to many of the chemical reactions that benzene showed while stating that these two are the structures of benzene. They both exist at room temperature. They coexist with each other. So he was able to explain a number of chemical reactions when he proposed these two structures. But there was no proof. That is the thing. There was no proof. There is, it is only a hypothesis. And he never proved it through any of the no, because at that time instruments were not there to prove. So he was not able to prove which was only an hypothesis which was able to successfully give an explanation to all the objections. Right? Now, with after Kekul, you know, with the advancement of uh, technologies like X-ray diffraction measurement methods, with all these technologies it was proved that it is not the structure of benzene. This is a totally false structure of benzene. And the resonance hybrid structure is the correct structure of benzene. Now, what is a resonance hybrid structure? Resonance hybrid structure is a structure where the six carbon atoms equally share the six pi electrons. Okay? It is not that this pair of electron is shared by only three atoms. One, two, three. It is not like that. This pair of electron is shared by all carbon atoms. Similarly, this one. Similarly, this one. So, all pairs, the three pairs of uh, electrons or the three double bonds are equally shared among all the six carbon atoms. And this is what we are going to prove in this video. So, how to prove that the resonance hybrid structure is the actual structure of benzene? Let us see. The first, this thing was X-ray diffraction measurement. Let us see what X-ray diffraction measurement actually came out with X-ray diffraction method measurements X-ray diffraction measurement came out with four points number one was that it is planar it is a cyclohexagonal ring which one the benzene is a cyclohexagonal ring it is made up of six carbon atoms it is a cyclohexagonal ring. Also, it is planar. Planar means all carbon atoms are in one plane. They are in one plane. 
The second important thing that it found out was that the CC bond length, the CC bond length, a bond angle in benzene ring is 120 degree. It is 120 degree. The third thing that uh, X-ray diffraction measurement was able to find and, uh, and it is very important uh, was that the carbon-carbon bond length, the carbon-carbon bond length in benzene, this one, the carbon-carbon bond length in benzene is 1.40 Armstrong. Okay, this is for all carbon-carbon bonds. Okay, for all carbon-carbon bonds, the bond length is equal. Okay, that is 1.40 Armstrong. So, the carbon-carbon bond length in alkane, it is 1.54 Armstrong. The carbon-carbon double bond in alkene, it is 1.34 Armstrong. So that indicates that the carbon-carbon bond in benzene is neither a single bond nor it is a double bond. It is somewhere in between a single bond and a double bond. That is, all the carbon-carbon bonds of benzene are neither single bond nor double bond. It is intermediate between single bonds and double bonds. Correct? So, an intermediate between single bond and double bond or an intermediate between sigma bond and pi bond. So, therefore, all carbon-carbon bonds in benzene have an intermediate character also. Right? It has got an intermediate character also. An intermediate between sigma and the pi bond character. So, it is neither sigma neither pi. It is somewhere in between. Okay, it is an intermediate character between sigma and the pi bond. So, such intermediate character or such intermediate nature between sigma bond or pi bond or between single bond and double bond, it is only possible if the pi electrons, the 6 pi electrons are delocalized. Such intermediate character or such a bond length that is intermediate between carbon-carbon single bond and carbon-carbon double bond. Such a bond length of 1.40 Armstrong. That is only possible if the 6 pi electrons are delocalized. So that is the first proof for resonance hybrid structure. Now the fourth point that is very interesting is in uh, through uh, X-ray diffraction measurement we were able to see that there is a pi cloud, a ring of pi cloud like this above and below the plane of the molecule. Already we have already proved that there is a planar structure. Benzene has a planar structure. Now above and below the plane of benzene ring, uh, we are able to visualize a ring of pi cloud. Now this ring of pi cloud is only possible Please note, it is only possible if the 6 pi electrons are in constant dynamic motion. It is only possible if the 6 pi electrons are delocalized. So that again gives you proof of the resonance hybrid structure of benzene. Now, <coughs> the importance of these two points, we will see subsequently in later section when we study molecular orbital structure of benzene. There we will take out these two points and understand and again we will prove that it is a resonance hybrid structure. For now we are not touching these two points but please do make a note. So uh, from these two points we understand that the structure of benzene is a resonance hybrid structure. Now let us go to the second point uh, how it was proved. Okay, So it was also proved by heat of hydrogenation. Let me just uh, rub the board. Please give me some time. My duster is a uh, new one. And uh, it is taking some time to uh, rub the board. Okay. Fine. Thank you very much. Now, the second point that proved was the heat of hydrogenation. The heat of hydrogenation or heat of combustion, whatever you want to call it, you can call the heat of hydrogenation or heat of combustion. Now, 
heat of hydrogenation is what happens is uh, a double bond is the energy released when a double bond is broken and two hydrogens are added okay i will show you with an example so this is cyclohexene and we are adding h2 okay now this is exothermic reaction so we get cyclohexane right and we get some energy also so this is 28.6 kilocalorie per mole of energy now what i have said it is the energy released when a double bond is broken and hydrogen is added so that energy is released in the form of heat so that makes it a exothermic reaction okay that makes it a exothermic reaction now this energy no this energy this one this energy is an indicator of how stable the starting product is okay this energy is an indicator of how stable the starting product is now more the energy released here more the heat of hydrogenation correct less stable the starting product is okay you got it more the energy released here that is more the heat of hydrogenation and less stable less thermodynamically stable the starting product okay let me demonstrate what i have said this is cyclohexene this is cyclohexadiene okay and now okay we require two moles and now we get double of what we get here 55 kilocalorie per mole this is actual values okay now where is the heat of hydrogenation more yes here it is more energy is released so which is the least stable among these two yes this is the least stable this is thermodynamically less stable okay so it gives you an indication of the thermodynamic stability of the starting compound that is what you need to understand fine now let us understand how heat of hydrogenation proves resonance okay <clears throat> now i am going to draw a chart and by seeing the chart only we will able to we will be able to understand how it is uh, how it proves the resonance hybrid structure of benzene okay so this is the chart so <clears throat> okay let me draw this one this is our cyclohexane here you draw cyclohexane here and also one cyclohexane here draw here cyclohexene a little bit uh, at a more heightened place you draw cyclohexadiene uh, allow a little more height and go for cyclohexatriene fine a little now uh, under this you go for your benzene fine under this and above this the benzene should come okay so little more up above yeah this is benzene fine now <clears throat> this is the heat of hydrogenation if you want to convert your cyclohexene to cyclohexane the heat of hydrogenation is 28.6 kilocalorie per mole 28.6 kilocalorie per mole that means if you are adding hydrogen then 28.6 kilocalorie per mole energy will be released okay now for this because it has got two double bonds it would be double of this value so now this value is 55 kilocalorie per mole okay to get converted into cyclohexane so cyclohexadiene is double the value of cyclohexene right the heat of hydrogenation is double the value of cyclohexene you can see correct <coughs> so for cyclohexadiene okay there is no structure like cyclohexadiene it is a hypothetical structure that was proposed by kekul correct kekul proposed this structure okay so for cyclohexadiene if you are looking at the heat of hydrogenation if you are calculating from these two okay that would be 28.6 into 3 
सो दैट विल कम एटी फाइव पॉइंट एट किलो कैलरी पर मोल ओके सो दैट इज एक्सपेक्टेड राइट फॉर इफ फॉर साइक्लो हेक्सीन इट इज ट्वेंटी एट पॉइंट सिक्स किलो कैलरी पर मोल देन फॉर साइक्लो हेक्साडाइन ऑब्वियसली इट विल बी डबल ऑफ इट एंड देन फॉर इफ देर इज अ स्ट्रक्चर like this cyclohexatriene which there is there is no structure like that but if there is a structure like that as kq suggested or proposed then the heat of hydrogenation would be 85.8 kilo calorie per mole but when we actually did it in the lab when we do it in the lab the heat of hydrogenation is only 50 kilo calorie per mole it is only 50 kilo calorie per mole the remaining energy what is the remaining energy from expected value that is 85.8 minus 50 that is 35.8 35.8 is the difference from expected value okay that itself indicate that uh, the structure of benzene is not the kekule structure had it been a kekule structure the heat of hydrogenation would have been 85.8 kilo calorie per mole okay as calculated from cyclohexy but because it is not a kekule structure its heat of hydrogenation is 50 kilo calorie per mole that means there is some mechanism by which the actual benzene which we are having at hand it is attaining stability and uh, there is only one way it can attain stability within itself that is delocalization of electron the only way to attain stability in in inside the molecule itself is by delocalizing its 6 pi electron so that is a proof of delocalization of electron or that is a proof of resonance within the benzene molecule resonance within the benzene molecule see from that which is expected what is the expected 85.8 what actually we got in our hand 50 kilo calorie from that from which it is expected that is 35 point kilo calorie 35.8 kilo calorie per mole that amount of energy is the energy by which benzene is stabilized and this stabilization is because of resonance or is because of delocalization of electron and because this stabilization is because of resonance that is why we call this energy as resonance stabilization energy or simply resonance energy and the resonance energy of benzene is 35.8 kilo calorie per mole 35.8 kilo calorie per mole i hope you got this second point very clearly let me repeat it this is cyclohexene to make cyclohexane <coughs> you release 28.6 kilo calorie per mole energy if you are adding hydrogen this much amount of energy will be released obviously this would be double because it has got two double bonds and obviously this would be triple because it has got three double bonds now such a structure doesn't exist it was only postulated by benzene this structure is a hypothetical structure okay so if benzene was this this much energy would have been released but because benzene is not this structure then because of that 50 kcal per mole energy is released and Uh, this much amount of stability it can it may be due to some mechanism in the benzene the only mechanism possible is delocalization of electron or resonance okay and because this kind of stability from the expected is because of resonance this amount of energy is called as the resonance stabilization energy so this again proves that indeed there is resonance in benzene now let us go to the third point the third point by which again the resonance structure of benzene is proven that would be molecular orbital structure of benzene just give me a little uh, more time so that i can rub the board clearly i thank you for your patience with my new duster okay <coughs> resonance the fourth the third point is molecular orbital structure molecular orbital picture molecular orbital picture of your uh, 
this thing of benzene now initially when i was discussing i have said that we will come to it later right the two points we highlighted and we said that we will come to it later what were these two points anyone remembers yes the first point was that by x ray diffraction measurement it was proven that benzene is a cyclohexadenyl ring right and it is made up of six carbon atom it is a ring in the form of a cyclohexagonal ring and it is planar that is very important point that means all carbons are in one plane all carbons in one plane fine and the second thing that we have discussed is the second uh, finding of x-ray diffraction measurement was that carbon 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 bond angle is 120 degree it is 120 degree what does this indicate it indicates an angle of 120 degree and planar molecule right both of this indicate sp2 hybridization sp2 hybridization because sp2 hybridization involves a ccc bond angle of 120 degree also it in involves a triagonal shape triagonal shape in one plane correct so it indicate sp2 hybridization indicates 120 degree and it indicates that the molecule is in one plane fine that means all carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized all carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized in benzene ring let me draw this all carbon atoms are any carbon atom you take it is sp2 hybridized sp2 hybridized now what is sp2 hybridization sp2 hybridization 1s and 2p they hybridize to form three hybrid orbitals right and these three hybrid orbitals are nothing but sp2 orbitals sp2 orbitals and there is one more orbital okay there is one more orbital that doesn't take part in any kind of hybridization can you tell me which orbital is it yes there is a p orbital there is an unhybridized p orbital also so there are three hybrid sp2 orbitals and there is a one p orbital let us first give an account of what is happening to three hybrid orbitals or three hybrid sp2 orbital let us give this account first so what is happening to three sp2 hybrid orbitals let us see so here is the carbon let us draw the benzene like this fine now <clears> three <throat> sp2 this is the first one let us see for this carbon only this is the second one and the third one you got it yes i hope you got it two of the sp2 hybrid orbitals are overlapping with two other sp2 hybrid orbitals of neighboring carbon atom right two of the sp2 hybrid orbitals are overlapping with two other sp2 hybrid orbitals of neighboring carbon atom one of the sp2 hybrid orbital is overlapping with the s orbital of hydrogen atom fine so we gave an account of three sp2 hybrid orbitals right two of the sp2 hybrid orbitals are overlapping with other two sp2 hybrid orbital of neighboring carbon atom and one of the sp2 hybrid orbital is overlapping with the s orbital of hydrogen atom so now we need to give account of p orbital so for that let us see like this benzene like this now there is unhybridized p orbital in all carbon atoms so these unhybrid p orbital this is the scenario for them see because they are in one plane all p orbitals are perpendicular to the plane of molecule that is the importance of planar because the benzene molecule is a planar structure all carbon atoms are in one plane that, that is the reason that p 
orbitals and hybridized p orbitals they have one one electron each they are perpendicular to the plane of the molecule they are perpendicular to the plane of the molecule and that provides a perfect alignment for overlapping correct that provides a perfect environment a perfect alignment for p p orbital overlap right now you think a condition if benzene molecule is not planar if it is twisted and bended okay if it is twisted and bended then can the p orbitals overlap can the pre orbitals overlap efficiently no that would not be possible efficient overlapping won't be possible there may be overlapping but efficient overlapping may not be possible now because this is planar structure efficient overlapping can take place between pp orbitals between pp orbitals and one more thing that i want to tell to you okay this is fine now i will <laughs> draw it vertically fine now all of them are having pp orbital all in perpendicular positions and ready for overlap the second thing is internuclear distance between each of the carbon atom is same okay this distance is also same to this distance this is same to this 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 so the internuclear distance between carbon atom is also same okay so this carbon atom why would it overlap with this carbon atoms p hybrid unhybridized p orbital this carbon atom it would overlap with this carbon atom p orbital and this carbon atom would also overlap with this carbon atom p orbital why because the interatomic distance is same so this can overlap with this and this can overlap with this why because the interatomic radius is the same okay so it can overlap on either side okay the c1 uh, unhybridized p orbital it can overlap on either sides uh, unhybridized p orbital okay so when it hybridizes with this okay then this would hybridize with this this would hybridize with this and when it hybridizes with this this would hybridize with this and this would hybridize with this so you will get a total of six kinds of molecular orbitals right this is the one this is two this is three and this is one this is two and this is three correct so there will be six kinds of molecular or different kinds of molecular orbitals that would be uh, formed because of this and because of this making and breaking of overlap right because of making and breaking of these six kinds of molecular orbitals that making and breaking is so fast that these six uh, kinds of orbitals they tend to combine with each other okay because it's so fast at, at it's occurring at such a fast rate that it seems to combine okay it tends to and it seems to combine resulting in a large molecular orbital in the form of a ring okay above and below the plane of the molecule the above ring is made up of overlap of upper lobes of these six kinds of uh, molecular orbitals and the lower lobe is made up of a combination of lower lobes of six kinds of molecular orbitals so above and below the plane of the ring a combination of these six different kinds of molecular orbitals takes place resulting in a large molecular orbital in the shape of a ring above and below the plane of the molecule the above ring is because of the upper lobes the below ring is because of the lower lobes now this is the molecular orbital a hybrid of all orbitals right it's a resonance hybrid molecular orbital correct Uh, and because it is made up of a combination of everything that is why we are call it, calling it as a hybrid so it is a hybrid molecular hybrid orbital now there were how many electron pairs three electron pairs or to be accurately speaking six pi electron now why this this six pi electron it has a large area to move right it would not be restricted to one particular section because the area the molecular orbital area is so much 
it can move anywhere right so now the six pi electrons are equally shared between the six carbon atoms the six pi electrons are equally shared between the six carbon atoms resulting in resonance resulting in resonance or delocalization of electrons delocalization of electrons you only think dear students you can only think why a particular pair of electron or a double bond would be restricted to a small portion a pair of electron a particular pair okay a single bond a, a double bond just a double bond or a pi electron it has lot of surface area to move so it will move the six pi electrons totally it will move over a larger surface area because a larger surface area is provided to it so that results actually in delocalization of electron and that results in the resonance structure of benzene that results in resonance structure of benzene now this is very different from what was hypothesized or what was postulated by kekul what did kekul say kekul said that this particular pair it will be oscillating here and it will be oscillating back here it will be oscillating back and forth so that would mean that this pair of electron is just shared by three electron three carbon atoms and that is wrong this pair of electron is shared by six carbon atoms equally not only this this one and this one too so that is that that is what the resonance hybrid structure of benzene is about so now you see why uh, the kekul structure is a false structure and the correct structure is the resonance hybrid structure of benzene correct so we are using this in chemical reactions now to say kekul that he is totally false is also wrong he is almost correct he is the person who came the who came closest to the structure of benzene and it this structure of benzene this structure which was proposed by kekul it actually gave you know it it is um, explaining most of the chemical reactions so whenever we are use you know, explaining mechanisms involving aromatic compounds we use the kekul formula and then whenever we are showing the reactions we use the benz when we use the resonance hybrid structure to say that structure is totally wrong is also not right this is almost correct but what he said was wrong right he said that oscillation takes place that doesn't take place actually it is uh, rotating right it is being delocalized and each pair is has is being delocalized and is equally shared among all the atoms that is what the hybrid structure of benzene resonance hybrid structure of benzene is dear students now benzene is a molecule that is stabilized by resonance therefore it would never partake of its stability it would never partake of its resonance stabilization it would never give even a pair of electron to any electrophile okay that would mean to uh, for benzene that would mean to partake of its stability so it would never show any kind of oxidation reaction nor uh, reduction reactions it will never show any kind of addition reactions benzene do not show oxidation reduction or addition reaction because if it shows that would mean that it will have to lose its resonance that it is not comfortable with so what reaction benzene shows benzene you can see it is rich in 6 pi electron it is rich in electron it is a source of electron so electrophiles can come and attack the benzene ring right electrophiles come and attack but it would never give its 6 pi electrons instead it gets rid of one of its hydrogen i told you one hydrogen is attached to all the carbon atoms in the benzene ring it would get rid of one of the hydrogen atom and attach the electrophile instead right so that is the way benzene undergoes reaction this mechanism is called as electrophilic substitution reaction so initially the electrophile gets attracted because there are six pi electrons in the benzene ring but the benzene never gives its six pi electron instead it gets rid of one of its hydrogen and accepts the electrophile into the system electrophilic addition reaction dear students i hope you have understood the class and i hope you have liked it if you have done so please do not forget to like share and subscribe the channel thank you very much